So when I'm working in the garden, I like to use uh, handheld power tools, use off a battery. So I've been transitioning from Black & Decker, which uses an 18 volt battery. Get down there. That's actually a replacement battery because the other ones, the ones that came with the tools have, have uh, worn out since then. I've bought at least a couple of replacements. And I've been transitioning to the green work system. So the Black & Decker uses an 18 volt battery. This uses a 40 volt battery. So it can hold more power. It's also lithium ion, so it's lighter. So the battery that comes with it, uh, that came with the, uh, the first thing I got was the lawnmower. The battery that came with it, it says 100, 146 uh, watt hours, which I, th I think it's about a half an amp hour. I'm not sure. I have to figure that out. Let's see. Yeah, it's about 0.3 divided by 40, about 0.3 amp hours. <laughs> so that that's fine for mowing our small lawn. But if I want to use uh, the uh, leaf blower or the vacuum, then uh, that's really not, not enough, not, doesn't last long enough. So I bought a four amp hour uh, third party battery that works really good for flag power. So uh, we did have a Black & Decker weed whacker. I don't really have a lot of weeds, but I use it for trimming the lawn and the uh, karapi in the front. So I just got a new 13-inch trimmer from Greenworks. So we're going to open that up and take a look at it and give it a try. Here's what the box looks like when you first open it up. So it's got the head and the handle. Here's the uh, guard. It's got a 13 inch head, that's plenty for what I'm doing. Um, I think the old one was, was 12 inches. Got the instructions. It's got a handle. That's and here's the, uh, got some lines. This uses 60, a 60 millimeter line. So I've got, that's what my old one used. That's one reason I bought this model, because I could use the same line that I had <coughs> saved up. Here's the cover for the, uh, you put the line in. There's the top part of the handle. So this is where the battery goes. And it's got the trigger. So you got the release so that uh, it doesn't accidentally turn on. This is where the handle goes. And then this plugs into the base. The base is pretty heavy. It's got a uh, it's got a guide here, that's good. And uh, the trimmer's already, the spring is already loaded, so that's helpful. So we just need to assemble this and we'll uh, be ready to go. Try it out. So here's the manual, it's got the usual safety things. Use your safety glasses. So it looks like it's possible to get an edge guiding wheel with this, but I don't think I this one really came with that. So don't really need that. It's, you know, I don't have that big of an area, so yeah, I was gonna put the base on, just snaps in, it looks like. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it does require a screw, so I'll have to get my screwdriver. Handle goes on. Looks like it just goes on without it. It needs a screwdriver too, yeah. Just the cutting width, 10 to 12 inches. All right, so let's get the screwdriver and we'll put it together and we'll try it out. All right, to install the guard, we gotta take the screw out, put the guard in, then put it back in. So, just unscrew this. It's got a recessed hole for the screw. The screw down in there. Move it around a little bit. There we 
there. Who does have the wheels? Okay, I missed that. So it does have the wheels are over here. So we're going to try those out. For edging, it's probably handy. So need to move the tape from the uh, uh, string cutter. So when the string feeds out, it gets cut off at the right length over here. Move the tape from the string. Maybe I notice it's got a pulsing thing on the top. So. Uh, So that's how you turn the you turn this. I guess that's not pull press to rotate. Yeah, pulse. So sometimes if you bounce it, it'll pulse out and make this go out further. We'll see how well that works. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It also means the angle of this thing. That's pretty handy. It could, it could be handy anyway. So I'm also gonna be using it like this for edging. And occasionally like this. So I guess we would use it in that case. Like this for weed eating. So we have a few weeds once in a while, but mostly everything's landscaped. We'll take this out of the way. So we're going to try this out on the Carapia. Now one last thing is to install the handle. So just unscrew this. Slip it over there. We're going to be using it. Uh, let's see. This way, I guess. Yeah. Slip it over this and put the screw back in. said the nun to get lined up. There we go. Get all the way through. There we go. Okay. So I can change the loosen this up and change the angle. Won't go but won't go past that. That's interesting. So I guess that's it. I guess that makes sense. So you could put a strap in here too to support it, but I'm not going to need that. Not sure what this is for. I guess we'll find out at some point maybe. All right, now we're ready to assemble it. So we assemble it. You can put this end in here. Line up these uh, triangles so that the electrical connection. You see these two triangles here. So the electrical connection makes properly, and then just tighten this up, and then it's ready to go. All right, so let's give it a try, and we'll see how it works. That's how we're going to use the wheel. We need to rotate this this position and then turn the head. So. All right, that should do it, and we're ready to go. All right, so here's our carapia. Put this in to replace the front lock, but you can see it's kind of invasive. So we do have it contained along the far edge. We have a metal uh, metal metal uh, edging. Can't really see it too well right there. So every couple of weeks, gotta keep after it. Cut all this off. Right? It's up in the whole yard. So it's very drought tolerant, so it doesn't require much water. But uh, a couple times a summer, growing season, I gotta chop it down to uh, you know down as low as I can get it with a weed eater. And uh, so I did that a couple of weeks ago, and you can see it comes right back. The roots go down as much as 10 feet. It's actually from Australia originally, so it's very good. For our Mediterranean climate here in California, so 
All right, I'll set up the camera so we can see how the trimmer works. Normally I would run the wheel on the uh, concrete, but just I wanted to get you get, get a good view of the how the cutting works. So I put I actually ran the wheel on the uh, karate itself. So you can see it did a good job. It would work better if I was on the concrete, but so I think it's a winner. So we'll, we'll finish this up and, and we'll do a recap. Before we start, I want to make sure we go over safety. So always use gloves, safety glasses, and a mask. Using the, you're getting, you're using the weed whacker, so it's good practice, avoids problems. <laughs> So it's 0.065 in dia uh, inches is the diameter of the lines. All right, I'll get that set up and we'll try it again with a better trimmer line. That's annoying. Maybe it's some kind of a balance to make it come down. So. Hmm. Well, let's take it apart. Let's feed it out a little bit more. Let's we'll see if it does better. So the new line worked better, the blue one, uh, fed better, did get a few little tangles, I think I overfilled it, so I would only use about 18 feet when you're filling up the, uh, the bees. The bees love the carapia. Yeah.
eventually this will all be covered with white flowers. So anyway, so it's working pretty good. I think the jury's still out about how well it feeds. We'll see. The other one was definitely on its last leg, so we need to get a new one. I'd say the wheel is marginally useful. I have I have kind of a short area with the concrete, so and you definitely don't want to use it the rest of the around the perimeter. So probably won't use the wheel that much. If you had a big area surrounded by concrete, then it would make sense. So uh, the battery held up fine for this amount of area. So we see the we just need to uh, uh, sweep it up and we're done. I checked the manual on line feed problems, uh, and I remember, I, now that I read this again, I remember what I read on the Amazon comments with this trimmer, is that if you're having trouble with line length, if you turn it off, and just release the trigger, then it'll, when it starts back up again, it'll go out a quarter of an inch, so. I think the trick is to, they were saying kind of, if your line was too short, just kind of blip it on and off, and then the line will pop back out again, so I'll try that next time. Other than that, I think it worked fine. It had a lot more power than the Black & Decker. It's a 40 volt system versus 18, so that makes a lot of sense. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signi signing out, and keep looking up.